Chances are you have swapped coils to see if a misfire code follows a failed coil. Theoretically, this diagnostic practice works because if a coil is not functioning, it will cause a misfire no matter what cylinder it is connected to. Still, this diagnostic approach does not consider how the primary side of the coil is turned on and off. Point systems, well, they used a mechanical switch that was driven by the lobes on the distributor shaft. The spark was then distributed to the cylinders by the rotor and the distributor. Modern systems, well, they use a digital switch mounted on a circuit board, and it's called a transistor. The spark is dependent on the position of the engine, and each coil is controlled individually. In some systems, the switch is in the engine control module, or in some cases, an ignition control module. On other vehicles, it could be a small circuit board on the coil that triggers the primary circuit. Some technicians call this the driver of the ignition coil. This is why first task when diagnosing one of these coils should be to retrieve a wiring diagram before you start swapping coils. From the wiring diagram, you can see what you're up against. In the wiring diagram, you could see the coil has three wires, power, ground, and trigger. The trigger wire is connected to the circuit called a transistor. Here, we see the coil has just two wires. For this engine, the driver or transistor is located inside the engine control module. A transistor is a solid state switch with no moving parts, and it's able to rapidly turn power on and off in a given circuit. In case of this ignition system, it's turning on the primary side of the coil. This is a great starting point to see if an ignition coil has power and control for that coil. This information is far better than swapping coils to track a misfire or a no spark condition. Why? Well, shorts and bad grounds can damage the transistor that switches the power in the primary. In some cases, the energy from the secondary might enter into the primary side of the coil and damage that driver. If you swap coils, you might get away with diagnosing a bad coil, but you might be causing a situation where the signal for the trigger or the control side is not coming from the engine control module due to a short or open in the wiring. If you swap coils, the results might be inconclusive. If you start swapping coils on a system like this one, you could be causing damage to the control module with the transistorized switch that is soldered to a board and sealed inside a module. As you swap the coil, it can damage the transistors. So instead of trying to cure one misfire, you might now have two misfires or even more. This is why some ECMs might be packaged with ignition coils, or you're required to buy ignition coils if an ECM is ordered. If you can't swap coils, what is the correct diagnostic strategy? For swapping or trading coils, test to see if the coil is being controlled. The safest test method is to connect a current probe to the power wire on the primary side. On your scope, well, you could see the ECM or the circuits inside the coil itself switching the power on and off to the primary, as shown here. You could also use the same clamp to look at the current ramp for the electricity saturating the coil. Swapping coils might seem like the fastest way to diagnose a misfire, but the reality is, is that you can waste time and it could give you inconclusive results and you could be damaging the drivers for the coils. I'm Andrew Markell, thank you very much.